Oh, hey, let's talk about feeding your African cichlids. Here we go. In this video, I'm gonna be showing you what, when, and how to feed your African cichlids, including me making up a batch of my own cichlid food concoction. I'm also going to be trying a new cichlid food that I heard makes your fish's colors pop even more. So I'll be giving that a shot. And also at the end of the video, I'm gonna show you an actual feeding of my fish, including a pro tip on how to get the food across the entire tank so that not just the big guys get to eat. All right, let's get rolling. As African cichlid keepers, we want our fish's colors to pop. I mean, that's why we bought them, because they're so beautiful. And there are things that we can do to make sure that their colors are the most brilliant that they can be. Some of those things that you can do include buying fish from reputable dealers, helping to make sure that your fish have good genes. That'll help them resist illness more easily and also make them color up a lot more. Another thing that you have control over, obviously, is the environment that you put them in. When you're adding them to the tank, is it going to be a good experience for them or are you designing it for the right kind of fish? African cichlids like a lot of swimming room, open swimming room. So not a lot of decor is usually added to an African cichlid tank. I do have some decor in mind because I also wanted some hiding spaces, so you can experiment with what works for you. But uh, they, they do like to be able to swim around freely. African cichlids also like current in the tank, so I have wave makers and filter outtakes that produce that. That gives them something to swim against and then swim with throughout the tank. Having the proper tank mates for your fish is extremely important in making them color up. If you have bullies in the tank or fish that are the same kind of fish as other fish you have, then that can create a lot of stress and that's gonna make them color down. African cichlids suffer from something called conspecific aggression. That means that they wanna kill anyone that looks like they do. Why can't we all just get along? So try not to have the same type of fish in the same aquarium. Probably the most important on this list is not food, but water quality. You wanna make sure that you have no ammonia, no nitrites, and nitrates at or below 40 parts per million. And one of the most important things that we can do is buy good quality food to feed them with. So I always look for foods that, first of all, have great ingredients. And if I look at the back of any of these Northfin products, which I do like, they have the top three ingredients being high quality fish foods. So the first one on this cichlid food is whole Antarctic krill meal, high omega-3 DHA herring meal, and whole sardine meal, followed by wheat meal, or wheat flour, which is a binding agent. And I don't want that to be one of the top three ingredients on my fish food because it's not giving them any nutrition at all, and the higher up on that list of ingredients you are, the more of it there is. I want the first three or four to be top quality fish ingredients, of fish food ingredients. Let me just tell you a little secret of mine. These bags of fish food are resealable, and I don't leave them out at room temperature. Now, when you leave them out at room temperature, they can lose a lot of the nutrients that they have in the bag. So what I do is I stick these all in the freezer until I need them. Then I pull them out, I make a small mixture of it, and then I keep this in the refrigerator and put these back in the freezer so they stay nice and fresh. Also with fish, you wanna give them a variety. Who wants to eat the same thing all the time? Marvin, you know I don't wanna go anywhere or try anything new. So I do have my North Fin food, and then I also have my Monster Pellets that are extreme, but I also usually have a bag of extreme food or a container of extreme food that I mix in with it. And that gives them a more well-rounded diet. And it has different things in it and they all have different pros and cons. So a good mixture is something that's good for your fish. Now I am going to be kind of forgoing that for a little bit because I'm trying a new product that someone introduced me to. It's a product called TDO Chroma Boost. Now this is a fish food that is supposed to boost the colors of your fish even more than they are already getting boosted with good food. Now when I heard about this, I thought, well, it's probably loaded full of dyes and things like that that aren't good for your fish. What is this crap? Well, that isn't true. I looked it up and the reviews were incredible, but then the ingredients are fantastic too. It has fish meal, krill meal, squid meal, and fish oil as the first four ingredients before you get to Wheat, or actually, hematococcus, whatever that is, I'm saying that completely wrong, I'm murdering it. Then wheat flour. So wheat flour is the fifth ingredient on here. I don't see anything that's gonna harm my fish. This looks like a good quality food. I am going to feed this exclusively with a few veggie pellets for my Mbuna, and then also the monster pellets for my big boys, because they're gonna need a little bit more food than this can give them. 
Now I love my fish so much that I'm not going to just give him some food without trying it out on a guinea pig first. Unfortunately, I don't have any guinea pigs around here, except for me. Now I'm not crazy enough to eat these Chroma Boost pellets straight out of the bag like chips. So I baked them into some oatmeal raisin cookies and ate them that way for about a week. With no real noticeable side effects that I can think of. Now since they are processed, when they form the pellets out of the ingredients, they're losing some of the ingredients anyway. It's just the way it is. So I have some other products that I usually add to them to keep them healthy. Garlic Guard is a great one because it helps boost their immune system. It hasn't really been proven, but I think it probably does. Plus it makes it taste really good. And then I also add some Vitakim, which is great for adding vitamins back into the food. Now it says to add one drop per gallon into the tank directly, which I never do. I just add a few drops to the fish food as I'm making it. And I make a lot of fish food to last about three or four days for my big boys, so I add quite a few drops actually. Now I was adding Seachem Nourish to the food as well, and this is supposed to give them more nutrition than what they can get with regular fish food also. I tried it for over a month, it was about two or three months. I didn't really notice a difference. I don't know if you're going to notice a difference so much with that, but I feel like it's too expensive for not being positive that it's actually working. Now let's get into how I make my concoction. All right, so I'm gonna take my TDO bag, TDO Chroma Boost, and open it up. I haven't been feeding them this food yet, so this will be day one of my experiment. All right, and these pellets are pretty small. It says, it says large on there, but they're still pretty small. It doesn't tell you, oh, it does actually, 2.3 millimeters, which I would prefer that they were about three or four millimeters for my fish. This was the largest they had. So I do about, since my fish eat a lot, I give them a, about a scoop of this every, or twice a day. Whoops, I'm dropping it everywhere. And you can make as much or as little as you want. You can just make enough for one feeding, or you can prepare enough for uh, the last year a week, and then just keep it in the refrigerator. So I have the food in there. I'm gonna, oh, I have to add a few of the veggie pellets. These are a little too small, but it's all I have right now because I ran out of the bigger ones. So I'm gonna put a scoop of that in there, maybe a scoop and a half for Ray, my Mbuna named after the rays of the sun. Put a couple capfuls of garlic guard in there. Actually, I might put three. There's no real uh, science to this that I actually have nailed down. But I want it to taste good and I want to give them that extra boost to their immune system because I think it does it, even though it hasn't been proven. Now for the Vitachem, I really don't count these either. I mean, if you're gonna put just a scoopful in there, I'm thinking maybe 10 drops or so, but I, I just kind of just squirt it in because I'm putting a lot of food in here. It gives them the extra vitamins that they need. And then take your spoon and mix it up. It should be nice and wet. And mine isn't really soupy. It's just pretty damp. So I'm gonna let it sit for a little bit though and let that absorb. Now another benefit of adding things like garlic guard and Vitachem to your dry fish food is that once that fish food hits the water, it's gonna start slowly expanding. Now once these fish eat a bunch of it, it's gonna be inside their bellies and it's still gonna to start to expand. And that can cause something called Malawi bloat. Now it may not happen, but if it does, it can be devastating and even kill your fish. So I do like to add just a little bit of moisture to my pellets regardless of what I'm adding to it. Okay, so I used to feed my fish one time a day and someone on my one of my videos commented that they feed their fish twice a day to help keep regression down. So I've thought about this before but I've never really implemented it for a decent amount of time. So I'm gonna start feeding them twice a day and see what that does with aggression. Now I'm gonna take this food and put one scoop in now and one later and I'm gonna put it right in front of this wave maker over here that's gonna blow it across the entire tank. So it's gonna be just spread out so that everybody can get some. It's not gonna be in one certain area. Some people feed in one corner and then the other corner so that it kinda of does the same thing. But this just shoots it everywhere. You're gonna see it goes in everywhere in the tank. All right, here we go.
And there it goes. Now, as you can see, everybody is getting to eat. Even the little tiny guys are eating. Not a fish is being left behind. Now, I feed them about as much as they can eat in about a minute if the wave maker isn't blowing it all over the place. Since the wave maker is blowing it everywhere, it's gonna take them a little bit longer because it's just harder to catch each little morsel. It's not just dropping straight to the ground in one central location. If you feed them too much, they're gonna poop more. And then when they poop more, you're gonna get higher nitrates and you're gonna be doing more water changes. Besides pellets, I also try to feed frozen krill once per week, blanched to zucchini once per week. I never have a fasting day because fasting makes me grouchy. So imagine what it would do to these psychopaths. And I always try at least once per video to ask you to like and subscribe. Thank you very much. So there you have it. That's what, when, and how I feed my African cichlids. How do you feed your African cichlids? Let me know in the comments. As always, thanks for watching, and I'll catch you next time.